Now, 12-year-old Billy Caldwell suffers from severe epilepsy. He's here right now, but he can't join us in the studio in case he has a fit. At one point, Billy was suffering from hundreds of fits every day. That was until his mum, Charlotte, who joins me now, travelled to the USA to get him medical cannabis, where it's legal. When they got back home to Northern Ireland, Charlotte went to see their local GP in desperation, who wrote him a prescription. But now the Home Office has written to the GP to say he can't write any more and Billy's supply of medicinal cannabis runs out next month. Well, this isn't the first time that we've heard about cannabis oil helping epilepsy symptoms on this programme. Earlier this year, we spoke to the mum of six-year-old Alfie Dingley, who um, also suffers from a rare form of epilepsy, which causes hundreds of seizures a month. His family are waiting to hear from the government whether they can use cannabis oil to treat him. Well, his mum, Hannah, described to us how seriously ill Alfie was before the drug reduced his seizures. Alfie has a condition which is a genetic condition which causes cluster seizures so he was having a cluster of very severe seizures every four to ten days so he doesn't have seizures every day but when he does have seizures they are very aggressive he doesn't breathe and they don't stop without intravenous steroids so when he starts having a cluster we can't manage it at home we're always into A&E via ambulance before he was on medical cannabis must I say always into A&E and by the time we'd got to our local hospital which is 15 minutes away he could sometimes have had four or five seizures so it's a very very aggressive presentation and the only thing that stops it is intravenous steroids. It's horrendous, it's the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life and I did it for two years. Well, let's talk now to Charlotte Caldwell, who is Billy's mum. Also with us is Dr Henry Fisher. He is the scientific lead for Cannabis Europa, a conference that is being held in London this week. And also with us is George Freeman. He's a Conservative MP and chaired Theresa May's policy board. Thank you all for joining us today. Charlotte, I want to start by explaining to us how Billy's life was prior to using medicinal cannabis. Um, Billy was suffering um, up to maybe 100 seizures a day. Billy has a condition called intractable epilepsy. Um, Billy is also a status epileptic. Intractable epilepsy simply means that his seizures couldn't be controlled by medication or diet. And a status epileptic is he, every seizure that Billy had, Billy cannot stop the seizure on his own. He can't come back out. He has to be administered a rescue med. Um, he goes blue and oxygen has to be administered as well. So you took the decision to take Billy to America to get medical cannabis and what effect did that have on him? Well, well I didn't, we didn't go to the States looking for medicinal cannabis. We went to the States because Billy's seizures had got that bad and I had been trying to access the care within the UK and Ireland but the waiting list was just too long. So it was when we got to the States that after, um, you know, a, 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 an awful lot of uh, diagnostic tests done by uh, um, a paediatric hepatologist there who's a specialist in epilepsy. They found a lesion on Billy's left temporal lobe. That was the cause of his um, life-threatening seizures. The lesion was in a position on, the lo uh, on his front left temporal lobe that they couldn't do epilepsy surgery on Billy. Um, because it would have to have removed all of the left temporal lobe which meant that Billy would have lost his memory and speech because that's what the left temporal lobe controls and it was then that the, the, the epitologist started to talk to me about medicinal cannabis. And when Billy took it, what difference did it make to his life? Um, over a period of time, it was a slow process. It wasn't an overnight um, uh, 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 thing, you know, it wasn't like a quick... It, I didn't give him the oil one day and the seizure stopped the next. Um, for Billy, it was a slow process and it was several different oils that had to be tried. But eventually, um, I started to see, first of all, the seizures started to reduce in the length of time and then they started to reduce in quantity. And um, so, cannabis oil is illegal? to be given here in the UK but you went to your GP mm -hmm. and he wrote your prescription so explain how that works. Yeah, yeah. Um, Billy, um, we returned from the States, Billy got his prescription and um, Billy's been um, on his medicinal cannabis might I say now for uh, 18 months in total, 19 months in total in the UK for one year and one month Billy has been using his medicinal cannabis. Um, we have travelled extensively all over the UK and Ireland because at the moment we're in the middle of a, a campaign for to actually get medicinal cannabis legalized for 
absolutely every single child in this country that has this. But it's not legal, so how did the GP write your prescription? Well, the GP wrote the prescription simply because he said common sense prevailed um, in Billy's case. Um, and I, I'm sure we're all aware that doctors have um, uh, one of the regulations is first do no harm. Um, but going back to it, um, Victoria, I travelled all over the UK, in and out through airports. We're in the middle of a campaign to try and get this legalised, not just for Billy, um, uh, but for absolutely all the children who desperately need this medicine. And what I am trying to do this week while I'm here in London is first and foremost is appeal whoever the individual is that actually has now signed my son's death warrant. They have taken away his medicine, whether it be at the Home Office or whether it be in the um, uh, Northern Ireland um, uh, 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 Health Department. Please come forward. Please come forward and show your face because, Victoria, a computer did not do this. A computer did not take away my son's medicine. It was an individual. And I'm asking them to come forward. I want to meet with them. We have been involved with Billy's campaign and another campaign, like I say, this last number of months. We have went to numerous politicians throughout the UK and Ireland. We sat down. We're mature people. We're reasonable people. We now have a solution that not only Billy, and we must remember this is not about one child. This, I have had, I'm sick of it. I've had it up to my back teeth. I am, this is not about one child. This is not about Billy or any one individual child in this country. I am taking calls for the last year from hundreds, and I mean hundreds, Victoria, of children disabled in their wheelchairs suffering enormous amounts of seizures a day, being tube fed. They're, they're mummies, Victoria, crying on the phone. These children are dying. These children are dying in our country and we now have to stand up here in the UK and say enough is enough. We can see the emotion, we can see the mother's plea within you. I want to bring in Dr Fisher, I also want to bring in um, George Freeman as well. Um, is there evidence that this works for every single person that takes medicinal cannabis? When we talk about uh, evidence for every single person, what we need to look at is, is the conditions that people have. And I think what, one of the main criticisms that's levelled against medical cannabis is that there isn't enough evidence. And to be honest, that, that is a red herring, especially for some conditions. Things like childhood epilepsy, nausea with chemotherapy, spasticity with MS, uh, chronic pain, and a growing number of other conditions. The evidence is there it, it, you know we've we've had meta-analyses we've had reviews and and it is strong and it's why lots of other countries have actually chosen to regulate medical cannabis in some way or another let me bring in george freeman i want to read you a couple of comments which have come into us if i may we've had an email from david saying i see no reason why alternative cures like cannabis oil and others cannot be used under strict medical supervision as in the case of that young lad it seems to allow him to have a better life and no amount of self-righteous pontificating will alter that and steve is tweeted saying cannabis should be legal period it's great it's safe medicine for a lot of conditions would you agree that now is the time to legalize medicinal cannabis evidence um, that's why I'm going along to the conference this week let me just be very clear um, for... oh now that is really frustrating isn't it because we now can't so we've got a really scratchy line to you George Freeman and we are really struggling to hear you which is very very frustrating because I wanted to to get a sense of whether things might change I mean the concern and both of you I'm sure will be able to answer this the concern of some people is that the analysis of medicinal cannabis hasn't been around for that long, over a long period of time, and there are concerns about the long-term impact on people. I'm, it, it's certainly true that we don't know as much about uh, the endocannabinoid system, so that's the system within our bodies that, that cannabinoids uh, act on. We don't know as much about that system as we do about uh, some other systems in the body, but we, we've known about this system for 30, 40 plus years. We know enough to know that it's safe and actually you know compared to very serious conditions where where you could be being prescribed something like steroids or something else which also has very serious side effects actually cannabis is relatively safe you know side effects are side effects are relatively minor uh, and it's clearly hugely beneficial for some people. Do you people. worry about safety? Um, uh, no, not at all, because when you are, are left in a position, Victoria, where you have absolutely no other alternative to um, uh, administer this medicine to save your child's life, um, it, it, for us, 
we had no alternative. And for me, Billy is now leading a much better quality of life. I would point out at this stage as well, I am not on here to declare that my son is cured because that would be a really dangerous thing for me to do considering the nature of his condition which is epilepsy. We all know that epilepsy can be controlled for a while and then return. Um, but what I am saying is medicinal cannabis is a, an amazing alternative to try on these kids that not just Billy, not just one child, but on absolutely all of these children that are suffering this brutal condition every day. It, now is our time. We have the resolution. Please come forward and talk to us. Charlotte, thank you so much for coming okay. in. Thank you as well.